The pear is a really easy to draw fruit and a really easy to paint fruit. So using the actual pears, I can decide where I'm gonna put them. I am unlikely to do three equidistant pears. If I give two a closer relationship and the other one is to stand aside or stand above, opposed to this one, or they're waiting for this one, or they're following, oh, if I turn the stalk that way, perhaps they're following that one. If I want them all on the same level, then that will be quite easy to put in some shadows. But maybe if this one goes up and this one goes down, perhaps that tells a slightly different story and therefore it's a bit more interesting. I'm gonna give that one a go. Okay, just put them up there for now and I'm going to put one here. So my method is to sketch in a round shape for the bottom, an oval shape for the top, and then I'm gonna, I'll smooth that out. These two are going to be lower and closer. Then what I'm going to do is smooth out those shapes, and I'm gonna do that with the actual pair. So this comes out here, and it's short and down. This comes out and it's lumpy and lumpy and kind of smooth the way it comes down here. And then it cuts off here and it's got a lump and a lump. So that's lovely. I'm going to erase all my guidelines immediately. And then this one, oh, it's got a lump, goes up and down, fat, and over there. This one comes down, out, and pretty much keeps going. Lovely, and so the stem actually comes out from there. And then the third one, it's so cool to actually uh, sketch from real pears. Fascinating how you then see the real shape. I really like to get rid of the guidelines as soon as I've finished drawing because I'm surprised how later on I can uh, question which line I wanted to keep and which line I meant to get rid of. Okay, so they've got their irregularities, which is kind of cool. I'm gonna keep these pairs sitting up here quite near me. This is the low tack tape. The paint on my palette is so beautiful but I'm going to be starting fresh, so I'm going to get rid of all this. Okay, in ink tints, I've got yellow, green, and purple. In a watercolour pencil, I've got yellow, green, and purple. And then I've also got these metallic pencils, which again comes with purple. There is no yellow, but there's... Um, this pretty green, oh, and a totally different green, a yellow green and a, a beautiful blue green. I'm gonna put down a whole stack of water. So that I can be wonderfully playful. Put down some of my yellow. I'm just making sure there's no lumps. And grab some yellow. And they're round, so I should be making round marks. Oh, so easy to just fall back into the normal way that I paint. And I've really been trying to challenge myself with this series, uh, The Seven Elements of Art, and think about the impact of the shape. So round, 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 and that one goes that way. That one goes that way, that one goes that way. Look at the dramatic difference between those two yellows. Well, about as dramatic as you can get in watercolour anyway. Then into that, I want to add some um, green. And so I'm going to do that with this fabulous colour that now lives permanently on my palette. And it is... Thalo turquoise. So what happens if we run colour into it? Whoa, it's just beautiful. Okay, round. <laughs> I just automatically begin this mark all the time. It's my go-to mark. 
and it's not necessarily good. Oh, let's go back to the lemon, reduce some of those greens. I'm gonna have to wash my brush each time that it um, touches another color. Not because I'm particular, but the yellow of all the colors is the one that is affected by other colors all the time. Okay, now it's beautiful and wet. Let's start in with this water soluble pencil. So I've got this green. I'm gonna draw in some rounds, some rounds. I'm trying not to complete the shape. That's that one. And then I've got this yellow. And the other pencil is, just checking its watercolor, because it doesn't look the same as the other, is this purple. I'm trying again to do rounds and rounds, rounds. There's the stem, the stem, the stem, and rounds. Okay, that was pure fun. That was the watercolour pencils. Now I'm going to use the ink tints and kind of repeat, really. Yellow. It's so beautiful once it hits the water and it just begins that wonderful journey of sliding around. That's the yellow. It gets so dirty so quickly. This is a type of purple. It's the closest I've got. Violet, so that's pretty. Oh yeah, and it's a deep purple. Look at the difference, that, that deep purple and the way it pops over this side, hey? And the stem and the stem. Oh, I'm gonna come back to that one, that's for sure. And I haven't used the green yet. Oh, go this side, this side, this side. They're water soluble, so as it hits the water, it does something so beautiful and it glides. But plus, I'm getting hard marks and soft marks all at the same time. Job now, these pencils are just pencils. So, I suspect very much that they won't do anything in the. Uh, again, I've gone back to that mark I make. Round, round, round. So they are able to draw over the wet watercolour, so that's quite nice. I'm just drawing rounds. And uh, I don't think there's any point using more of those. Uh, what I would like to do is make a big impact with uh, this fat one. This is a Winsor & Newton watercolour what do you call it? It's like a crayon. It's sepia. So anyway, let's go for it. I'll put it down the bottom of the pair. <laughs> and where it hits the water again, beautiful. Oh, <laughs> where it's wet, it's so beautiful. Give it a little shape in there. Round, think round, 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 round. Just enjoying that and watching it float in. The hero of the day, or heroine, I should say, is this magnificent um, purple. And I think so purple is what is needed here. A few contour lines now. I put in some lighter ones. This goes round, this goes round. So I'm putting in some contour marks like so. Like that. Is that helping? Not even a little bit. That's just horrible. Okay, I need to rescue it by getting rid of that with that big brush. That's better. Come back and do the same with the lemon. Grab a lot of the lemon and move those marks about. That's better. It's um, mixing and making a a khaki looking colour, but I don't care, just better to get rid of the impact of those lines. I think it wants um, either more green, more purple, I'm not sure. I'm going to mix up some purple, some of that deep purple that is. So I'm going to do that with phthalo blue. So I've got phthalo turquoise and phthalo blue, and I'm going to mix phthalo blue with opera. This is a little bit left over of my opera pink. 
and it made the most fabulous purple. Okay, now we're talking. Now rounds, and I'm just going to enjoy painting into the marks that are requiring some purple. It needs to be deeper, so I'm going to get more phthalo and more of that beautiful no, I've used that all up so that's pretty good this is um, magenta this will also be completely fantastic there's a few lumps there I don't know whether or not they're gonna dissolve let's see oh yeah instant dissolving but I've gone too far to the purple side let's go and grab more blue And it's such a magnificent, rich purple. Purple. I'm thinking about the round. I'm trying very hard to think about that round shape. So this fat line leads to that fat line, leads to that fat line. And let's put in a smallish line there. don't want to outline them completely, but I do like the idea that they're made a little more interesting by that. How about now some more of this purple? Mm, nope. Let's, uh, let's consider just dropping in water. It's just a purely fun experiment here. I haven't put too much thought into it. A little bit of dirty water over there just takes away the starkness of that white there oh I know what would be beautiful this fabulous color I'll mix it with that green can be dark and dark it can be a shadow color coming down here that will go into there and that goes that way that's cool. Yeah, lovely. And that, that casts a shadow on that. All right, much better. What I've done there is increase the tonal range. I've stuck with a limited palette on the color. And I'm going to say it's done. of them there in case later on I change my mind but I think for now it's done pretty good and absolutely fun and so fast that was beautiful oh I love the green that's in behind rather than putting the blue absolutely everywhere and these connected blues that they're dark purpley blues have um, just combined the three in a gentle way so that's lovely it will move a little bit I'll get some back runs and that's okay I really don't mind at all thank you so much for watching as always I really appreciate your support thanks guys see you next time bye